Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Dragon Age Origins. In the previous episode, we completed some of the quests here in Lothering. Only two left before we can finally leave this place, thank god. And hopefully my game doesn't crash again. Seriously, this is like my third or fourth attempt at recording this and every time I go off to do this one quest it keeps crashing. I'm hoping what I have done has fixed it, or I am going to be rather upset. Anyways, the two quests we have remaining are call some infected wolves, or not wolves, bears, and find the orphan boy's mother. In order to find the mother, we need to find and fight these wolves. They're not all that tough, but they do have numbers on their side. Your warriors can handle it, but you're going to want to keep an eye on yourself, if you're playing a rogue, and Liliana. Because these things can perform an overwhelm attack that will, well, pretty much take you out of the fight temporarily while they, well, munch on your hide. But like I said, they're not all that tough. A few shots will take them down, and what the heck is going on with the Morgan's attire? I swear, I've got no clue what's up with these graphical glitches. And there I go. Like I said, keep an eye on it. I just got distracted by what's going on with the Morgan's attire that time. I really have no idea. Oh, well, that's gonna cost me an injury kit, but yeah, so be it. All right, with that taken care of, we can hit the corpse, which has. And I'm off. You found the body of the boy's mother and have recovered her keepsake. What is up with these graphical glitches going on? Eh, whatever. It doesn't matter. Now, we just need to find the bear. But first, Alistair's gotten a level up. I think I'll pump that into strength. Let's see. That required level 8. Precise striking. Yeah, that'd probably be good to have for him. Make sure he's actually hitting his targets. Now then, where are those bears? Here, bear, 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 bears. Oh yeah, there's a bunch of refugees I haven't bothered with at the moment. Really? According to this, they're right over there, but I didn't see anything. Then again, I have established in the past that I will miss things that are right in front of my face, so... Yeah, yeah there they are. They don't look all that infected, but what do I know? Okay, this is way too weird. I have no idea what's going on with that, and quite frankly, at the moment, I don't care. I'll probably quick save and quick look to take care of it. Well, that's that taken care of. Nothing to loot off of them, though. Let's just take care of this quick save and quick load. And that has fixed absolutely nothing. <sighs> this game just does not want to work with me today, does it? Oh well. Uh, let me get my momentum and duelist back up. Because I forgot to re-enable those after the wolf fight. Anyways, we're just going to hit up the Chanter's board, get our reward, which is a nice weapon. Which is kind of why I was so intent on, you know, getting this done. Ugh, I get the feeling these graphical glitches have something to do with the fix I had to make in order to get this working. Blessed are the peacekeepers, champions of the just. And the stars stood still, the winds did quiet, and all animals of earth and air held their breath. 
all was silent in prayer and thanks. Well, that's the quest completed. Which should have netted us a Oath Keeper. Now, here's the thing about the Oath Keeper. The plus 10% to healing effects received doesn't work for us. It, it just doesn't. Which sucks. But so be it. I think I'll be equipping this one because I haven't had a new weapon for my main hand in a long time. And it actually looks a lot like the one Duncan had. Interesting. Basically what I had to do to fix the uh, problem I was having is I had to go to the task manager and set the affinity so that it was only working off of one of the CPU cores. Which seems to have fixed it, but may also be the cause of these graphical issues. I'm not 100% certain. Anyways, with that, we are done in Lothering. And then we've got these guys to contend with. Granted, we could go around, but I kind of need to show off what happens here. We don't know what was said. You're a warden. I don't know if you killed King Kalen, and make her forgive me, I don't care. But that bounty on your head could feed a lot of hungry bellies. Attack! Idiots. Ah! <laughs> These guys aren't going to be much of a challenge, considering that they are only armed and have no weaponry whatsoever. Although there are a lot of them, I won't give them that much. Man, what happened to Momentum and why does it keep disabling? Let's have at it! Another point for me. Ah, poor bastards. Didn't have to do this. Alright. Now in order to make our way out of here, we just need to head up, well, these ruins. Though I should probably grab this elf root first. Huh. Yes. May as well. It's free, and I can use it to make some lesser health poultices. Away with your fault, creatures! Leave us alone. Yeah, may as well help them. <laughs> Oh, come on, why are they all going after me? That's right, it's on Alistair. That's all of them. May as well talk to yes. the dwarves while we can. But first things first, a bit of looting is in order. Small carved statuette. This is a gift for Alistair and the last of the gifts here in Lothering. Mighty timely arrival there, my friend. I'm much obliged. Yeah, you're welcome. The name's Bodan Fedic, merchant and entrepreneur. This here is my son, Sandal. Say hello, my boy. Hello. Road's been mighty dangerous these days. Mind if I ask what brings you out here? Perhaps we're going the same way. It's a bit complicated. But you're welcome to come along. Complicated? <laughs> Somehow I imagine that only says half of it. Thank you for the offer. But there may be more excitement on your path. And is good for my boy and me. Allow me to bid you farewell and good fortune. Goodbye. Now then, let's get this mess cleaned up, shall we? Oh, he has no idea how accurate that statement is. Uh, while I'm here, I may as well give that gift to Alistair. Where is it? Here we are. 
I could get used to this, you know? Yeah, don't. See, a blood mage, what blood mage was doing here, I have no idea. A sealed letter. Hmm. Maleficarium regrets. I won't go back, let them hunt me and dread finding me, but you, Meles, Meles, should not live this life. It would please me if you found a life in the Circle Tower. I left a few things there, mostly stolen from the Enchanters. Sell them to fund a new path. The cash is in the study area, Middle Alcove. Goodbye. Ooh. Alright, time to loot these corpses and, and then, off. at long last, get out of here. Bad dreams, huh? Ugh, must have been something I ate. Drank more like, as in the tainted blood, remember? You see, part of being a Grey Warden is being able to hear the Darkspawn. That's what your dream was, hearing them. The Archdemon, it talks to the Horde, and we feel it just as they do. That's why we know this is really a blight. Oh, the Archdemon? Is that the dragon? I don't know if it's really a dragon, but it sure looks like one. But yes, that's the Archdemon. It takes a bit, but eventually you can block the dreams out. Some of the older Grey Wardens say they can understand the Archdemon a bit, but I sure can't. Anyhow, when I heard you thrashing around, I thought I should tell you. It was scary at first for me, too. Any other surprises I should know about? Other than dying young and the whole defeat the blight alone thing? No, I'm all tapped out for surprises. Anyhow, you're up now, right? Let's pull up camp and get a move on. Not quite yet. Because here in party camp is where we can ta ta talk with our companions, learn more about them. And as you can see, Bowden Fedek actually decided to tag along. Ah! It's good to see you, my timely rescuer. Bodon Fedic, at your service, once again. I saw your camp and remember the kind offer that you made the last time we met. And is there anywhere safer for a poor merchant and his son to sleep? I think not. I'm perfectly willing to offer you a fine discount for the inconvenience of our presence. How does that sound? Good? Yes? Hmm? Have you been following us? Following you? I'm not even certain where you're going, my friend. And quite frankly, it's none of my business. Trust me when I say that my encountering you here was serendipity and nothing more. I travel a lot, so I'm bound to meet everyone on the road eventually. If you prefer, I'll take my boy and be on my way. But regretfully, you're the safest spot on this road, without a doubt. Oh, well, you're free to stay. Just mind yourselves. Wonderful. Thank the kind lady, won't you, boy? Thank you, kind lady. We won't be a bother to you and your companions, I assure you. If you should need enchantments, simply talk to my boy. Otherwise, come speak with me. To be honest, the majority of the rest of this is probably going to be speaking with companions. You and your friends are formidable folk, indeed. It's good to have you along on the road. Mm -hmm. So what's your story, exactly? Oh, nothing so unusual and so interesting as you and your companions, I'm sure. Dwarven merchants are common enough on these roads, aren't they? Mm-hmm. You heard any rumors? I hear news from Dinnerum that Tyrn Loghain has been declared the new regent. It makes sense, his daughter being the queen. That's what I've heard on the road, anyhow. Take it for what it is. Hmm. Heard any other rumors? Thank the Maker we didn't lose Tyrn Loghain at Ostagar. He pulled his troops out just in time, so it said. Without him... We'd be lost. Yeah. That's what I've heard on the road, anyhow. Take it for what it is. Alright, let me see your wares, Bodan. 
I'm sure you'll be pleased with the goods my boy and I have collected, and with your discount. There is one specific thing we're going to need from him that we need to buy now. Tome of Physical Technique. Manuscript of Physical Arts, scribed by a master and rarely seen outside of the most prestigious militias and guilds. Careful study grants the reader access to additional rogue or warrior talents. Oh boy. That, um... Yeah, that's expensive. Huh. How much have I got? Half of what I need. Well... I think it's about time I pass with the Reaper's Cudgel. Nice as it is... I think I'm gonna sell it off because I need the extra gold. Now then, let's get that Tome of Physical Technique, and I may as well grab the Tome of Arcane Technique while I'm here. And you're gonna want to buy this now, for reasons. Uh, let's see. Do we owe more? Four, plus 4%? No. Spell resistance. The ones I'm specifically looking for are ones that do paralysis. Lightning rune, cold rune, hail rune, silverite, slow rune, that's something else. Hmm. And these are a bunch of gifts from Feaster Day pranks and other things that you can give to your friends. One of them gives you a lot of ex a lot of uh, gift boost or a lot of boost to affection or opinion or whatever, and the other, well, causes you to lose a lot. But I don't think I'm going to be using those unless I really need to boost someone's opinion of me. Uh, as for crafting, he's got distillation agent, but he doesn't have any death root to speak of. A shame, but oh well. Anyways, now that we have that, I haven't reached level 8 yet, so no point in using it just yet. There's a specific reason I want to save it for level 8. But I think for now, I'll be talking with my companions. Like I said, that's probably going to take up the rest of the episode, so if you're not interested in any of that, feel free to end it here. What do you need? You want to talk about Duncan? You don't have to do that. I know you didn't know him as long as I did. I just thought you might need to talk. I... I should have handled it better. Duncan warned me right from the beginning that this could happen. Any of us could die in battle. I shouldn't have lost it, not when so much is riding on us, not with the blight and... and everything. I'm sorry. There's no need to apologize. I'd like to have a proper funeral for him. Maybe once this is all done, if we're still alive. I don't think he had any family to speak of. He had you? I suppose he did. It probably sounds stupid, but part of me wishes I was with him. In the battle. I feel like I abandoned him. Yeah, he saved your life by sending you to the tower. Yes. I know. I think he came from High Ever. Or so he said. Maybe I'll go up there sometime. To see about putting up something in his honor. I don't know. Have you had someone close to you die? Not that I mean to pry, I'm just... I saw plenty of death in the alienage. Yes, I, I suppose you must have. I, I can't even imagine, really. Thank you. Really, I mean it. It was good to talk about it, at least a little. Mm -hmm. Anytime, Alistair. There, that gets you some nice approval. So there is another good reason to talk to them. Leliana. Yes? I'd like to talk. Well, here I am. This vision of yours... I knew this would come up sooner or later. I don't know how to explain, but I had a dream. In it, there was an impenetrable darkness. It was so dense, so real. And there was a noise, a terrible, ungodly noise. 
I stood on a peak and watched as the darkness consumed everything. And when the storm swallowed the last of the sun's light, I, I fell and the darkness drew me in. What then? When I woke, I went to the Chantry's gardens, as I always do. But that day, the rose bush in the corner had flowered. Everyone knew that bush was dead. It was grey and twisted and gnarled, the ugliest thing you ever saw. But there it was, a single beautiful rose. It was as though the maker stretched out his hand to say, even in the midst of this darkness, there is hope and beauty. Have faith. And this made you want to help me. In my dream, I fell. Or, or maybe I jumped. I'd do anything to stop the blight. I know that we can do it. There are so many good things in the Maker's world. How can I sit by while the blight devours everything? Well, I suppose I couldn't sit by either. That is why you're a Grey Warden. Come, there's a blight to stop. Alright, Sten, let's talk. Why are we stopping? I think we should talk for a moment. We're, we're working together. I think I should get to know you. There are dark spawn to be fought. Is this delay needful? I need to know if I can trust you at my back. I am Kunari. I have given my word to aid you. We are not people of idle promises. I've never met a Kunari before. Tell me about your people. No. Please. People are not simple. They cannot be summarized for easy reference in the manner of the elves are a lithe, pointy-eared people who excel at poverty. Well, you said you are in the army. We're a little hostile, aren't we? Many humans have said that to me. I do not understand it. If I were indeed hostile, you would be bleeding. So this is you being calm and helpful. Couldn't you tell? You said you were in the army. I am. Well, what made you decide to become a soldier? Decide. I am a Sten of the Beresad. I did not choose to be who I am any more than you did. Mm. Have you ever fought in a war? I have always fought in war, Elf. So you must know your way around the battlefield, then? Some of them. They aren't all alike. Are you always this bad an about answering questions? Generally. I do not see how this matters. Seheron and Parvolan are distant. Ferelden and the Darkspawn are immediate. What's your hurry? What a strange language you speak. You say hurry where I would say duty. It's not your duty to handle the Blight, though. No, it is yours, and you are chatting with me instead. <sighs> we should get moving. As you wish. Yes. Let's try again. What were you doing in this, in that cage? Sitting, as you observed. Very funny. Thank you. Are you going to answer my question? I did. Parshera, was there anything else? I wanted to discuss something you mentioned. Speak, then. That's enough. Then I suggest we move on. I am hardly surprised. Why did you come to Ferelden? To answer a question. What was the question? The Arishok asked what is the Blight. By his curiosity, I am now here. Hmm. Why would the Kunari care about the Blight? Why do you? Ferelden is my home. So if this Blight were in Orle, it could consume the land with impunity. Don't strain yourself pondering that. I do not know why the Arishok sent us. He commands and I go. Did you find the answer to his question? A portion of it. What was the answer? Were you not at Ostagar when the army was overwhelmed? That is your answer. Don't you have to report back then? Yes. Okay. Well, I can see you are right on top of that. I cannot go home. Why not? It doesn't matter now. Can we move on? We keep the dark spawn waiting. Alright, let's go. As you wish. Yeah, Sten's gonna be one of those guys that's 
difficult to get answers out of. Anyways, let's talk to this mysterious guy. You're a hard woman to find. Where are my manners? The name is Levy. Levy Dryden. Did Duncan ever mention me? Levy of the coins? Levy the trader? Eh... Uh, never heard of you. Really? He never told you of old Levy? We've known each other for years. But here I am carrying on while you have a blight to stop. Don't want to waste your time. But you see, Duncan promised that together we'd look into something important for the Wardens. And for me. But poor Duncan's. Well, no more. A tragedy it is, but that. But I know he would want his work carried on. His pledge fulfilled. How did you know Duncan? It's a bit of a tale, that is. But I'm the one who brought the Grey Wardens back to Ferelden. Well, I was one of the ones. There were a lot of us. Make us breath, I'm a bit nervous. Honoured to be here, really. Go ahead, tell your tale. After King Marek freed us from the Orlesians, the Grey Wardens begged the King's permission to come into Ferelden. Some sort of internal business. Me and a mess of other Warden sympathizers spoke on behalf of your order. Tan Logain was very much against letting all Legion Wardens in the kingdom. But Marek, Andraste, bless him, was a fair-minded monarch and he let them in. Go on. So that's why I was there when the Wardens and their leader, Genevieve, presented herself to the King. The first Wardens in Ferelden in over a century. Proudest state of my life, that was. Duncan was a bit of a scamp back then. We were of an age and struck up a friendship. The king himself went with the wardens on their mysterious business. When he returned, he rescinded King Ardlan's decree, and the wardens came back to Ferelden for good. Hmm. Duncan was an easy man to like. <laughs> that he was. Well, thank you for your part in bringing the wardens here. Oh, his stomach's all a flutter. You're welcome. What, uh, promise did Duncan make to you? My family, well, past a bit checkered to see. Nobles look at us with disdain. My great-great-grandmother, Sophia Dryden, was the last warden commander of Ferelden back when the wardens were known as freeloaders. So King Arlen banished the wardens, and he took House Dryden's land and titles. <clears throat> That's a bit drastic, isn't it? And then some. Not much is known about that time. After King Arlen died, there was a civil war, loads worse than this one. And our family was on the run, hunted by enemies, with nary a friend in the world. But Drydens are tough. We rebuilt, became merchants, and we never lost our pride. Hmm. Surprised that you kept your name. Our family's only crime was guarding the kingdom against the Blight. We're not ashamed of that. So, what favor did you ask of Duncan? I asked for the truth. My family reveres Sophia Dryden. We know she died at the old Grey Warden base, Soldier's Peak. We want evidence to clear her name. It won't restore our land or our titles, but it'll restore our honor. I've never even heard of Soldier's Peak. Well, no one's been to Soldier's Peak since Ireland's days. At least none that's come back. I spent years mapping the maze of tunnels to the peak, and I found the way a few years back. So I went to Duncan, I did, and I said that he could reclaim the old base and my family could have its honor. Why didn't Duncan help you? Darkspawn surfaced in southern Ferelden, and Duncan got plenty busy recruiting new wardens and meeting with good King Caelan. Duncan said he would help after the Battle of Ostagar, said there might be useful things at the peak, but he never had the chance. Hmm. Alright, and how will reclaiming it help the Wardens? Soldiers peak a strategic and symbolic importance. Duncan said that it would be worth it right there. He also hoped to recover lost Warden history and perhaps a few old relics. No one knows what's up there now. And what do you need from me? I can pick my way through the tunnels at the base of Soldiers Peak, but the place... Well, they say it's haunted. And it'll be dangerous for certain. Will you think on it at least? Well, your family's faith will be rewarded. I'll help you. A thousand blessings upon you, Warden. I'll mark down the location on your map. 
When you arrive, we'll pick our way through the tunnels together. Great. Anyways, we may be out of time, but I've just got Morgan and Rex to deal with, so let's talk to them. What do you wish of me? I'd like to discuss something personal. We are in camp, so tis as good a time as any. Why are you still here? I am here because Flemeth commanded me to aid you. Why? Do you wish me to leave? I can do so if you prefer. No. Well, do you want to? If I wanted to leave, then I would go. I remain, so do not ask such pointless questions. Okay then, yeah, that... Yeah, that gave us a hit. Alright, let's see if I can't give her some gifts. Let's see, no, no, no. Yes, this'll work. A fine gift. You have my thanks. And the tribal necklace. Those are some free gifts I can give to her. Because those can go to anyone. What do you wish of me? I'd like to ask you something. If you must. See, did you grow up in the Kokari Wilds? Why do you ask me such questions? I do not probe you for pointless information, do I? I'm curious. What's wrong with that? Any number of cats could inform you of the answer to that question, but have it your way. What is it you asked if I grew up in the wilds? A curious question. Where else would you picture me? For many years it was simply Flemeth and I. The wilds and its creatures were more real to me than Flemeth's tales of the world of man. In time I grew curious. I left the wilds to explore what lay beyond, never for long. Brief forays into a civilized wilderness. But you kept going back to the wilds. Would you not do the same? Your world is an unforgiving and cold place. The wilds I hail from is home to me and I a natural denizen. For all that I had been taught, however, the truth of the civilized lands proved to be... overwhelming. I was unfamiliar with so much. So confident and bold was I, yet there was much that Flemeth could never have prepared me for. Very daring. That sounds like you. <laughs> Equal parts daring and foolhardy, perhaps. Only once was I accused of being a witch of the wilds, and that by a chastened who happened to be traveling with a merchant caravan. He pointed and gasped and began shouting in his strange language, and most assumed he was casting some curse upon me. I acted the terrified girl, and naturally, he was arrested. Oh, that was quick thinking. Men are always willing to believe two things about a woman. One, that she is weak, and two, that she finds him attractive. I played the weakling and battered my eyelashes at the captain of the guard. <laughs> Child's play. The point being that I was able to move through human lands fairly easily. Whatever humans think a witch of the wild looks like, tis not I. Not that I did not have trouble. There are things about human society which have always puzzled me, such as the touching. Why all the touching for a simple greeting? Touching? Like a handshake? To begin with, yes. What is the point of touching my hand? I find it an offensive intrusion. There were many nuances that Flemeth could never tell me of, when to look into another's eyes, how to eat at a table, how to bargain without offending, none of these things I knew. I still do not understand it all, truth be told, but then I gave up long ago any hope of doing so. When I returned to the wilds last, I swore to Flemeth that I had no intention of leaving again. Yet here you are. Yes, here I am. Well, let's get on with it before the ground opens up and swallows us, yes? Sure, why not? Alright. Rex, let's talk. As much as you can with a dog. Oh, why you little... Did you just jump at the sight of your own shadow again? Oh, you're so funny. Such rapier wit. Your furry friend here took offense at me getting near his food. He snapped at me. Look. Oh, there's hardly any blood drawn. Still, he shouldn't have. Sometimes I forget that he's a war dog. That'll teach me. And that is that for this episode. 
Gonna end it off here. If you guys like what you see, please leave a like, subscribe for future content, don't forget to hit that bell icon to get notifications for when I upload, or to hit the straw poll link to get uh, to vote for our next Let's Play. And please, leave a comment down below this video. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thanks for watching.